R4D2. What used to be the final level of Rundown 4, now outdone by R4E1 in many ways. However, despite the addition of new levels and the nerfs that hit D2, it's still quite the challenging level to even experienced players. With many rooms for error, this level has been the death of many unfortunate prisoners who wander its halls. But today, we go over the secrets of D2 and how you could turn this level into a nice stroll through the complex. And by stroll, I mean sprint, because the fog is rising and there isn't a moment to waste, so let's get moving now, shall we? Hello everybody, my name's Professor Scalar and welcome to the R4D2 guide. Now, before we get into this level itself and start talking about loadout strategies and the usual, there are a few things I want to preface. First of all, remember how in previous guides I'll usually get to a point where I say, if you're just doing the main objective, skip to the timestamp that you see on screen and yada yada? Well, that's going to be a little bit different this time. Both the overload and extreme objectives need to be completed before the main one if you're going for prisoner efficiency, but both optional objectives will have mechanics tied to them that will change up how you're going to handle the main objective. And these aren't just simple changes like one extra spawn point for a security door. For those reasons, I want to summarize these changes now so I won't be constantly saying things like, if you're just doing the main objective, keep this door closed, but if you're going for prisoner efficiency, make sure you leave it open for later, and then having to explain why over and over and over again. It will be a lot simpler to just summarize the changes here and then explain the main portion of the level as if you're doing prisoner efficiency. Then, people who are just going for the main objective can apply this information I'm about to give you to what I teach you later and then have a better understanding of how they want to handle the level, the strategies they should be using, and what they need to do. I want to make sure I thoroughly explain this level for both people who are doing prisoner efficiency and people who are just doing the main objective. However, I don't want to be teaching both methods side by side because then things can get a bit confusing as I'm going through it, and I don't want to teach the level for one method first and then come back and do it the other way because then it's just making the level take longer and it doesn't really need to be done that way. So I'm going to try to do it this way instead and hopefully keep things simple and not too confusing. So let's start off with the overload changes. The overload objective will require you to carry some cargo all the way to the forward extraction. However, this cargo will initiate an air alarm. To make this more manageable, you're going to want to preserve certain doors along the main route so you can shut them at the end to buy yourself some extra time. Obviously, if you're just doing the main objective, you don't need to preserve any of these doors. So whenever you see me saying that you'll want to leave a door open for later so you can save it for the air alarm, you can disregard that comment. However, make sure that I'm saying to leave it open for the air alarm and not a different reason. There are going to be some points where you'll want to leave a door open to funnel enemies even if you're not going for prisoner efficiency. And that's all there is for the overload. It sounds pretty simple, right? Just simply shut doors I'd normally tell you to leave open. Well, the extreme objective is a bit more severe when it comes to changing level mechanics. Finishing the extreme objective will cause infectious fog to slowly rise throughout the level. This effectively puts a time limit on the remainder of the stage. You need to move fast and be efficient. You can't spend forever clearing out enemies and looking for resources. If you see 5 regular sleepers in a room, don't waste time trying to crouch walk and then synchronize your kills. Rush them down with your hammer and bring them a swift death. You'll need to be confident in kiting enemies and killing enemies in large groups with just melee and practically no gunfire. You'll also need to make sure that you're grabbing fog repellers along the way. Unless you're on world record pace, you're going to have alarm rooms where the scans are going to be going down into the infectious fog, making things quite annoying. Fog repellers will assist in lowering infectious gain and keeping your HP high. There are also three resource zones along the main route, however, you're not going to be going into a single one of them. With the fog rising, you don't have the time to spare to explore these zones and get the resources from them. Even though one of them does have a proper fog turbine in it, it's not worth going after. Trying to get that thing is just going to make the level harder on you. But if you're not doing the extreme objective, you can disregard everything I just said. You can take things slow. You can spend time looking for resources and clearing out enemies. Fog repellers are a thing that you can completely ignore, and those resource rooms are fair play, assuming you can survive the alarms that are tied to them. For those of you who aren't doing a prisoner efficiency run, 
Keep the things I mentioned in mind. That way you don't get confused when I'm talking about the main objective portion and the strategies for it, and you can understand how you can better handle it yourself. There are still a few other changes I did not mention by the way when it comes to prisoner efficiency and main objective runs. However, I'm going to save those for when they actually show up in the level, just because it'll make more sense to talk about them then, and it'll make things a little bit more simple. But with all that out of the way, let's start going more in depth with the level itself and how to complete it, starting off with your loadout. When it comes to your weaponry, you can take just about whatever you feel like using. The only specification I'll give you is to take two burst cannons on your team. The reason for this is because you will have to deal with a fair amount of big chargers in the level, you will have a tank you're going to have to kill, and if you go for the extreme objective, you will have a lot, and I mean a lot, of hybrids to deal with. Burst Cannon is probably the best weapon for this situation and will make things quite a bit easier for you. When it comes to the rest of your weapons though, just take whatever is comfortable and whatever works well for you. Something to keep in mind though is that you should not be relying on your guns for every single situation, especially the first half of the level. Ammunition gets a bit scarce the further and further you go into it, so having ammunition saved up for the ending bit where you really need it is going to be quite helpful. Try to rely more so on kiting and using melee to clear out the initial rooms and dealing with the first few alarm doors. Then when it comes to your tools, I have two recommended loadouts, one for people doing prisoner efficiency and one for people who are doing just the main objective. If you're going for prisoner efficiency, you will be taking a bio tracker, a mine deployer, and two seafoam launchers. Each objective in this level has one specific tool that will make things much easier when going through them. The overload objective is much easier with the bio tracker, seeing how every enemy in there is going to be a shadow or a shadow scout. And then that error alarm that initiates when you pick up the cargo at the back end of it, that is a shadow error alarm. So having the bio tracker for it will make things much easier. I dare say it's a necessity for this level for a majority of people. When it comes to the extreme objective, every single security door back there except for one is going to be a blood door. And there is no better tool at dealing with blood doors than the mind deployer. And then finally for the main objective portion, the seafoam launcher is going to shine brighter than any star you have ever seen. You are going to be doing cluster alarm after cluster alarm after cluster alarm. A lot of situations you will literally just go through two or three rooms and you're all right to the next alarm door. But the beautiful thing about almost every single one of these alarm doors is you can funnel enemies to one specific door, making it very easy to just keep the doors perma seafoamed while your team does a scan then letting enemies break down the door and come in as you're doing the last set of scans. This will take advantage of spawn cap, you'll only have to deal with the 25 enemies that spawn in, and you don't have to deal with extra waves upon extra waves like you would if you try to use sentries or if you don't perma seafoam the doors. There are some situations where you won't be able to perma seafoam, but I'll explain those when we get to them. Overall, I find two seafoam launchers to be very helpful, and you're going to need as much as you can get, that way you can comfortably deal with every single alarm door up to the end. For those of you who are just doing the main objective, however, you'll be taking a very similar loadout, but instead of a bio tracker, you can either take a third seafoam launcher or you could take a sentry of your choice. While the bio tracker isn't useless along the main objective route, it definitely isn't what I would consider a necessity, and it could be better suited with either a third seafoam launcher, so it's even easier to keep doors proper seafoam during the alarms, or a sentry that can help assist you in killing enemies when it comes to dealing with the alarm doors or when it comes to dealing with the extraction alarm. Just keep in mind though that the seafoam launcher is still top priority when it comes to tool refills and your main goal is to still try to keep every single door perma seafoamed. Also if you do take a sentry, make sure that's on the inside of the room with you so it's only going to shoot enemies once you finish all the scans and you let the door break down. That way it's not wasting ammunition. Loading into the level you'll see that your main objective is to clear a path to zone 102. You start off in zone 91 so you have quite the distance you need to go. Zone 91 will have no enemies inside of it, nor will have any resources for you. You'll only have your first bulkhead key, the door control to all three objectives, and then potentially you'll find a few seafoam grenades or trip mines, not in boxes or lockers, but found lying around on the map. That's a big thing to keep in mind. Keep an eye out on the shelves, the cupboards, and the desk throughout the entire level, because you will be able to find things like seafoam grenades, seafoam trip mines, and fog repellers, all of which will be very useful for you, so do keep an eye out for them. For those of you who are just interested in the main objective, skip to the timestamp that you see on screen because I first need to explain the overload and the extreme objective, since you will be doing those first if you go for prisoner efficiency. The rest of you though, you can join me up by the security door to zone 710, and we'll be talking about that first. Zone 710 will lead you to your overload objective, and you need to go through a surge alarm to get into there. 
So let's look at a floor plan for this alarm door. As you can see, there's only one room enemies can spawn in, one door they'll go through, and then what looks like three doors that they can take to get into your room truly only translate down to one. Enemies will always take this door right here, which makes it a lot easier for you to handle, seeing how the enemies will be coming through the door that's the furthest away from you. The only preparation you need to do for this alarm is make sure you see from this door right here and then keep all three of the other ones shut. This will make it so that by the time you're getting close to finishing that third search scan, enemies will then start getting into the room. If the scans are being a bit trolly for you though and they're taking longer, enemies might get into the room just as you start the third scan, but even then, you just have to shoot them, keep them off of you, finish the scan, and most of them won't even be able to respawn before you finish that scan in the first place. Once you're done with the surge alarm, you can head into zone 710. In here, you'll see that your overload objective is to find and bring a cargo container all the way to the forward extraction in zone 1 or 2. However, you're not going to be picking up this cargo yet. Picking it up will initiate the air alarm and you don't need to do this until you complete everything else in the level and then come back for it. The only thing you need to do is clear out every single enemy in the zone and find the bulkhead key. In the zone you will find nothing but shadows, shadow scouts, and spitters so do be a bit cautious when it comes to clearing them out. There also will be some resources inside the zone. I recommend you do not pick them up though, leave these for when you come back at the end. You're going to be finding plenty of resources in the extreme zone, enough to the point where you can pretty much cap everybody and then still have everybody holding onto a pack. So you really don't need to pick these up, save them for later. Once all the enemies are dead, you know where your resources are, you've found the location of the cargo and you have the bulkhead key, you can leave the zone, go back to the door control and then select your extreme objective. The extreme bulkhead door to zone 345 is just a full team scan so you can head in without doing an alarm. Inside you'll see that your extreme objective is to repair a generator cluster that will require two power cells. Zone 345 itself will have chargers in it as well as two security doors, one to 346, one to 350. The security door to zone 350 is currently under lockdown and will not be openable until you have finished the extreme objective completely. And as you can guess, your third and final bulkhead key is inside zone 350. So you have to go to zone 346 first. Zone 346's security door is a blood door, and just like every blood door in the zone, you need to be cautious when dealing with it. Not only will the blood door spawn in a ton of enemies, usually about 4-6 to six hybrids, but it will also be connected to a room that has a ton of enemies in it. Which means if you decide to shoot near these blood doors or in the same room that's connected to them, you will be setting off the room that you just opened up. Best thing to do is set your minds either parallel or perpendicular to the door if you can face them perpendicular, and then run away from the blood door and go into a side room to fight the enemies there. That way you can fire your guns freely without having to worry about triggering any extra enemies. Once this blood door is finished you can head into 346, clear out the rest of the enemies. In here you'll find your generator cluster as well as three more blood doors that you can go to. However you only need to go to two of the three blood doors since you only need two power cells. So use the terminal in the zone to figure out exactly which two of the three you need to go to. Zone 347, 348, and 349 are all very similar to each other, which makes my job of explaining things quite a bit easier. All three of them are blood doors, and just like the previous blood door, they are connected to rooms that could potentially have a ton of enemies in them. So make sure that after you place your mines down, you open the door, you run far away from it so that your gunshots don't wake up the rooms. There can be a wide variety of enemies inside of these zones. The more dangerous ones being shadows, giant shadows, shadow scouts, regular scouts, and big chargers. So you definitely don't want to be triggering these rooms. To make things worse though, every single one of the zones are pitch black, which means it's very easy to accidentally trigger an enemy just because you can't see it. However, do keep in mind you don't have to kill every enemy. The only thing you need to do is collect your resources and collect the power cells. If you get lucky and those are within the first half of the zone, you can grab those and leave. Leave the second half alive, no reason to kill them, they won't get triggered at any other point in the level. Once you have both power cells and all the resources though, you can then prepare to finish the generator cluster in your extreme objective. When you put both power cells in, this will initiate the timeline I was talking about earlier. Most people like to say that you basically have one hour to finish the level from this point, but ideally you're going to want to finish it faster than that. I would say that if you're on pace, you'll usually get to the final extraction scan around the 40 to 45 minute mark and be out by that point. Any faster than that, and you're doing really good on time. Any slower than that though, and things are going to get a bit more difficult because of the infectious fog. So before you put the two power cells in, make sure you're distributing resource packs and you're picking up any of them that you left behind, that way you don't leave any of them behind in this zone. 
and then make sure everybody knows what the plan is and you're all on the same page when it comes to the rest of the level and how you're going to deal with it because you won't really have the time to just sort of stop and discuss a plan as you're going through. Once both power cells are put into the generator cluster, the lights are going to flicker like they normally do, go out, then a full team scan will appear when the lights come on. During this full team scan there will be an alarm, but thankfully you will be able to finish this full team scan completely before enemies even get into the room with you. Once you're done with the scan, run all the way back to 345, go there and then open up the security doors to zone 350. There is no scan on, it's just a simple open door, and the only thing inside of that room is going to be a single box or locker with your bulkhead key. No enemies, no resources. One person go in to get the bulkhead key, while the other three people defend and kill the wave of enemies that come from the generator cluster alarm. Once you have the bulkhead key and all the enemies are dead, you can then head back to zone 91 to the bulkhead door control and select your main objective. Around this point, the people who are just doing the main objective should be joining up with us, so let's go meet them, that way we can all talk about the rest of the level together, and I don't have to explain everything twice. Alrighty, looks like we're all back together again, both prisoner efficiency runners as well as just main objective runners, so let's continue on with the rest of the level. Now keep in mind, I am explaining the rest of the level as if you're doing a prisoner efficiency run, so if you are just doing the main objective, take whatever I say and then mix it in with the information I gave you during the preface part of the video, that way you know how to properly handle the rest of the level, the alarm doors, and everything else in it. That and you can omit the information I'll be giving you that doesn't apply to you. But for you prisoner efficiency runners, the clock is ticking. Infectious fog is starting to slowly fill up the level. As you may notice, even the bomb portions of zone 91 already have a thin layer of infectious fog on top of it. So you need to move quick. The security door to zone 92 is going to be a cluster 2 alarm. For you prisoner efficiency runners, enemies can either come back from early in zone 91 where they did during the surge alarm, they can come from the overload zone, or they can come from the extreme zone. And there are no doors you can really shut to buy yourself extra time, which isn't too big of a deal since this is just a cluster 2 alarm. For those of you who are just doing the main objective though, all you need to do is make sure all the doors inside the zone are completely shut, that way enemies have to break down two doors to get to you and it will give you plenty of time to do the scans before they reach you. Once you have finished the scans and you have killed every single enemy, you can then head into zone 92. Zone 92 will have a few resources inside of it, but there will not be a single enemy so you can rush through here as fast as you can. Uh, the far eastern corner of it you will find a security door to zone 93. This is a cluster 3 alarm so let's look at a floor plan for it. In this situation you are leaving a door open that way you can preserve it later for when you're doing the shadow arrow alarm. But by doing so you are making this door slightly more difficult because enemies will have no door they have to break down to get to you and they'll just go straight through that open door. Thankfully though this is just a cluster 3 alarm and it is a cluster alarm in general which means the scans go by fairly quickly. So even with enemies in the room with you it's pretty easy to just simply run through the scans once or twice, finish it, bonk enemies and just keep them off of you while you're doing it without losing too much HP. Once you have finished this cluster alarm though and all the enemies are dead, you can then head inside of zone 93. Zone 93 will have no resources inside of it, however it will have a few, a few enemies as well as a scout. On the far eastern side of it you will find a security door to zone 94 and at the northern end of it you will find a security door to zone 95. Zone 95 is your first of three resource rooms, so prisoner efficiency people, you will not be going here. But main objective people, while you will be going here, you're going to want to deal with Zone 94's alarm door first, that way you can minimize the spawn locations for it. As you can see, there's only one door that enemies are going to be coming through to get to you, and this is going to be the first door where you're going to want to start perma C foaming it, since this is a cluster 4 alarm. When it comes to perma C foaming doors, the best way to do it to make sure you're not wasting resources is to just keep track of what set of scans you're on. That way, once you get to the final set of scans, you can let the door break open. It doesn't matter if the door is just about to break. Once you hear your team say, okay, we're doing the final set of scans, let the door break open, go join them, finish the last few scans. That way you're not wasting seafoam and you don't have to wait extra long for enemies to finally come into the room, even though you've already finished the scans. Once every single enemy is dead, you can then head into zone 94, Main objective people though, you can take a detour and go to zone 95 first. That security door is just a full team scan, no alarm tied to it. Inside you will find nothing but big strikers, big shooters, and one scout. Inside zone 95 you will also find a power cell. This power cell can be used to get into either zone 97 or 99, both of which being the other two resource rooms along the path. So if you want to go into one of those two, make sure you bring the power cell with you. Once you're done though, you can then head into zone 94 yourself and deal with that zone. Zone 94 will have a few resources for you, quite a few enemies to deal with, as well as another scout that will be in your way. 
Once you've cleared everything out though and you got the resources, you can head to the southeast corner where you'll find your security door to zone 96, which is a cluster 5 alarm. But also next to it on the southern edge of the room, you'll find a security door that leads you to zone 97. This is your second resource room that will require the power cell you got from 95 to get into it. No matter which one of the two groups you are, you will be doing the zone 96 cluster alarm first, so let's look at a floor plan for that. As you can see, there are two rooms enemies can spawn in, which means this is one of the few alarm doors where you cannot guarantee every enemy will come to the same door. You'll leave one of the western doors open, that way they will go through that route of the two every single time, and then the second door down that route will be the one you perma see from, assuming they come from the west. If they come from the north, you're a bit out of luck. The issue with the two doors is they're too far away from you to do the full team scan and then run up to them and see from them if they do come from that direction, but I wouldn't recommend you see from the doors in advance due to the fact that there are two ways they can come out of that room and they can easily go for either one of them, and if you see from both of those doors and then they come from the west, you just wasted a lot of sea foam, and that's not going to make things easier for you going through the level. So instead, I would recommend sea from the western door no matter what, and then just hope they come from that direction. If they do, you're in the clear. Just keep that door perma sea foamed. If they do come from the north though, fall back a little bit, focus on the scans, and try to shoot and kill the enemies from afar and clear them out a bit. And then also make sure you're paying attention to where the second wave comes from, because if they end up coming from the west, you want to make sure that whoever is a seafoam watcher is trying to keep that door perma seafoamed a bit while also making sure they don't get killed by the enemies or rushing them down. You also do need to be careful because this is the first cluster alarm where chargers can start appearing, although you won't see that many of them, if any at all. Once you finish this alarm door though, you can head into zone 96, unless if you're part of the main objective only people who want to go into zone 97, in which case keep 96 shut, that way enemies can't spawn from that direction. As for the security door to zone 97, this is a surge alarm, and the layout for it is going to be the exact same as the one for the security door to zone 96. The only difference being that the door that you left open earlier on the western side to funnel enemies, you're now going to want to shut that door, and then you're going to want to sea foam that one. That way if enemies do spawn from the west, they have to either go through a sea foam door, or they have to go through two non sea foam doors to get to you. If they spawn from the north though, and a door up there is broken down, then this is going to get a little bit more complicated. But again, there's really not a whole lot you could do to make sure that this goes by smoothly without wasting resources. Once you finish the search alarm though, you can head into zone 97. This zone is very dark and will have quite a few enemies in it, so do be cautious. In here though, you will find a lot of resources, usually two med kits, two ammo packs, and one tool refill. There is also a fog turbine located in 97. However, this is sort of a useless fog turbine in my opinion. If you're just doing the main objective, you do not need this whatsoever as there will be no fog that will hinder your sight along the rest of the level. And if you're going for prisoner efficiency, you really can't afford the time to go in there and grab the fog turbine and then use it. So no matter which group you are, you have no purpose for this fog turbine, so just leave it behind. Once you're done collecting resources though, you can head over to zone 96 and start going through there. Zone 96 will have resources for you, a lot of enemies you have to deal with, and once again, another scout. The unfortunate thing about this one though is that you can get quite unlucky and have almost 20 enemies in one room as well as a scout. If that is a situation, the best thing you can really do is try to stealth kill enemies as you're going but being quick and efficient about it, or just simply taking a shot and killing the scout when you do have line of sight of it. Then just having to deal with the rest of the room by either meleeing them or shooting them if you can afford the ammo. At the far eastern edge of the room, you will find a security door to zone 98, and this is a cluster 6 alarm. So let's look at that floor plan real quick. As you can see, there are going to be a few areas that enemies can't spawn from. Thankfully though, they all have to funnel to one central door to get to you. So this is going to be the door that you are perma foaming the entire time. Now the other thing to mention about this alarm door is that the bridge portion of this room will probably be covered by infectious fog by this point depending on how fast you are which means either you'll need to use fog repellers, that way you can do the scans without getting too much infection, or if you are fast enough, you could just simply spam jump to keep your head above the infection, and you don't have to worry about gaining too much during this alarm door. Or if you're really, really quick, you won't even have to worry about the infectious fog whatsoever during this alarm. Once you have finished it though and the enemies are dead, you can head inside of zone 98. Zone 98 will have resources for you. There will be a lot of enemies in here, potentially a few big strikers and big shooters as well, and of course, there'll be another scout, because why wouldn't there be? At the very northern end of this zone, you will find two more security doors. 
The one to the east will lead you to zone 100 where you need to go. The one to the west will be your third and final resource room that leads you to zone 99. The generator will be at the very northern edge of this room. Once again though, no matter which one of the two groups you are, you will be doing the alarm door to zone 100 first. So let's look at the floor plan for that. As you can see, there are three entrances to the room you're in, but thankfully every single time enemies will take this door right here, which means this will be the door you will be perma foaming the entire time. The other thing about this alarm too is that the bottom portion of this room is where most of your scans are going to go. And by this point, this room is definitely going to be covered in quite a bit of infectious fog, so you will need fog repellers to do this alarm without gaining too much infection. Once you have finished this alarm door and all the enemies are dead, you can then head into zone 100 if you are a prisoner efficiency group. If you are doing just the main objective though and you did not go into 97 and instead you're going into 99, keep zone 100 shut, that way you minimize the spawn locations. The security door to zone 99 is a class 3 alarm. I don't need to show a floor plan for this though because enemies are going to be coming through that broken open door no matter what, they won't touch the other ones. Which is going to make it fairly easy to deal with actually because enemies are going to be coming through on the opposite side of the room which will buy you even more time to do these scans. Although, do expect to have a bit of a gunfight because enemies will definitely get on top of you before you finish all three sets of scans. Inside zone 99, you can expect to pretty much see the same thing you saw in 97. It's going to be very dark, you're going to have quite a few enemies, potentially more scouts. However, the amount of resources in here will not be as much. You will only find one med kit, one ammo pack, and one tool, tool refill on most of your runs. So not quite as many resources, but it's definitely easier to get into than not zone 97. So it's up to your team which one of the two you want. Harder difficulty but more resources, or easier to get into but not quite as many. Either way though, once you're done with that, you can then head over to zone 100. Zone 100 will have no resources inside of it and will always have six big chargers, two in the first room and then four in the second room. If you can silently kill these guys, that is the better option. However, there will be times where you won't be able to, best way to handle this is just have your burst cam people positioned behind the big chargers that way they can one shot them and then coordinate your shots and if you're in the room with the four chargers in it and literally all four of them are next to each other kill two with the burst cannon and then just gun down the other two before they kill you then at the far eastern edge of this room you will find a security door to zone 101 this is another cluster six alarm door however this one's a bit more complicated to deal with looking at the floor plan you can see that there are three rooms enemies can spawn in if they spawn from the western one, there's only one door they have to go through. If they spawn in either of the two rooms though, they have to break down two doors to get to you. By this point, you are probably running fairly low on sea foam. You might not even have enough sea foam to fully sea foam two doors. But I would recommend that no matter how much sea foam you have, the best thing you do is have mines positioned on all three of these doors since you are able to get mines facing directly towards them. And then sea foam the western door first and foremost. The nice thing is, if they do spawn in one of the other two rooms, they have to break down one door before they can get to the door that's actually connected to your room. Which means, you'll have plenty of time to actually run up to it and see foam that door if enemies come from that direction. However, the western door is the only door they have to break through, so if you don't see foam that in advance, there's a good chance they can actually break it down before you can even get up there. So see foam that door, and then keep an ear out for what direction enemies spawn from, and then have your bio tracker also give out calls. Now, if you get lucky, all the enemies will come from one direction and you might have enough sea foam that you can actually just keep this perma sea foam the entire time. However, if you get unlucky, they'll come from all three directions and you won't have the sea foam to even try to perma sea foam all three. And even if you do have the sea foam for it, I wouldn't recommend it. If you sea foam the western door and you hear them come from the north end, go up there and sea foam that door. But then if you hear them come from the south end, don't bother trying to run around and keep all three doors sea foamed. I would say just keep one of them perma sea foam the best you can, and I would say do that to the one where the most amount of enemies are coming from, BioTracker will help you out with that, and then just let the other doors break open and then the rest of your team can focus on shooting the enemies and trying to kill them. A fair amount of the enemies during this cluster alarm will be chargers by the way, so do be cautious of them. I would recommend heal up a little bit if you are all at 20% HP. Also, the bottom portion of this room, it does have quite a bit of infectious fog in it, so you will need to use a few fog repellers to help out because some of the scans do like to go down below into that fog. As for the cluster alarm itself though, this one's going to be slightly different. It's not just going to be a full team scan and then a bunch of cluster scans. It's going to be a full team scan, then cluster, then one big red scan, another set of cluster, two big red scans, and then a full team scan to finish things off, which means Everybody has to be alive at the end of the scan, otherwise you will not be able to finish the full team scan and stop the alarm. 
But once you have finished this and every single enemy is dead, and I mean every single enemy is dead, make sure there are no stragglers whatsoever, you can open up the security door to zone 101. The reason why I emphasize so much to make sure every single enemy is dead before you open up the security door and make sure there are no stragglers is because inside of zone 101 there is a tank. And it's better to try to deal with this thing while it's asleep rather than have a charger rush in, punch you, make you freak out, and then either you shoot or the charger screams and then wakes up the tank right behind you. As for dealing with the tank though, it's actually not too bad. There are two staircases behind it, one on the left wall and one on the right wall. What you should do is have all four people go behind the tank and then two people go on each side, preferably having the two people burst cannons be on opposite sides from each other. Then, once you're all ready, count down together, all four of you shoot at the tumors on the back of the tank, and then run into those staircases. The tank will then come after one of the two groups, and the other group can shoot it from behind to damage him. Then when he turns around and tries to go for them, the other group can then come down the stairs and start shooting as well. There is a turn on the stairs, which makes it so you can hide around a corner if he does come after you, and you don't have to worry about getting hit whatsoever. Once the tank is dead, then those of you who are just going for the main objective can head down to the security door to zone 102, open it up, it's just a open security door, head in and then deal with the extraction alarm. When you step into the room, the extraction circle will appear and an alarm will initiate. This alarm will spawn in waves of chargers. So place down any mines on the ramp leading up to the room if you have any left, throw a seafoam on the floor if you have that left, and then place down your sentry to assist you while you're defending against the waves of enemies. This extraction scan takes about a minute and a half, which isn't that long in real life, but in GTFO time, it sort of feels like an eternity when you have chargers rushing you down. But overall, dealing with this extraction alarm isn't actually too terribly difficult. People who are going for prisoner efficiency though, you need to go all the way back to the beginning of the level into the overload sector back in zone 710 to collect the cargo that you left behind. On the way back, you'll notice that a lot of the rooms that you went through before are completely covered in infectious fog. Do not use fog repellers to try to get through these things, you're going to want to save those fog repellers for extraction. Instead, just run through them as fast as you can, you will gain a lot of infection. However, infection doesn't deplete your HP that quickly. If you're sitting at about 60% HP, you should be able to get all the way back to the overload objective, pick up the cargo, and get most of the way back to the extraction scan before the infection actually starts depleting most of your HP. The other thing is too, if you left resources behind in the overload sector, you have those that you could pick up. Health, distribute it among everybody on your team. I would say whoever's carrying the cargo though should get the most of it because they are going to be more vulnerable than anybody else. They are not putting that cargo down at all until they get to extraction, which means you they won't be able to defend themselves if shadows sneak up on them. The other three people on your team should be getting most of the ammunition because the person carrying the cargo obviously won't be stopping to shoot. And then the tool refill should be put all into one seafoam launcher. Don't give it to the mines, don't distribute it between the two seafoam launchers, put it all into one seafoam launcher. But once you've done that and you're ready to go, pick up that cargo and get moving. This air alarm will spawn in about 4 shadows every 20 seconds, which is pretty fast compared to previous air alarms throughout this rundown. Just keep moving. If they spawn from behind you, just keep on moving. Do not stop and wait for them to try to kill them. You need to go through these zones as fast as you can, especially the ones that are completely covered in fog. Along the way though, make sure that any of these doors that you left open to funnel enemies earlier and preserve for this point, you go through them and you shut them behind you to buy yourself more time. Once you start making it through a few of these doors, it's basically smooth sailing until the extraction scan because every enemy behind you is going to take a lot longer to get to you. However, do not seafoam or mine any of these doors. You're going to want to wait till later to use seafoam. And mines you just straight up don't want to use because any enemy you kill to mines can then potentially spawn in front of you later on. You're going to try or you're going to want to try to max cap the level with shadows. As you're moving through, when you get to zone 98, you can see the door that my team is going through. When you get to this door, make sure everybody's through it and then the person with the seafoam launcher is going to shut it and then keep that door seafoamed for as long as they can. As long as every other door in the zone is shut, the shadows will come for this door. You can seafoam it over and over again, depending on how much seafoam you have left over, and this will buy your team more and more time to finish the extraction scan. Everybody else though, you're just moving forward. Once you're out of seafoam, run away from the door, meet up with your team, and help defend with them on the extraction scan. When you get to extraction, open up the security door to 102, and this room is going to be mostly covered in infectious fog, so you're going to want to throw one fog repeller near the entrance of the room, and one on top of the extraction scan. Walk in, put the cargo down, and now you have to defend. 
When the shadows get to you and you kill off a few of them, chargers will start spawning in. The charger extraction alarm is still going on, so eventually you'll get a mix of shadows and chargers. And this is where a lot of runs come to an end. You need to be very cautious and make sure you're communicating. Whoever has a bio tracker, you need to be very efficient with your pings. If you see just two shadows approaching, do not tag them, because if you do, there's a chance that another 10 might come from behind that you won't be able to tag whatsoever. Don't only just tag enemies, give callouts. Say, hey, five enemies coming from the left, two enemies coming from the right, and then open fire. You're gonna have to do a lot of blind firing here to try to kill the shadows, but you just have to do your best to keep enemies away from you. If you completely run out of ammunition, let your team know that way they don't shoot you by accident and you should just run out and try to take as many enemies with you. It doesn't even matter if you just grab three or four of the shadow's attentions. Every enemy's attention that you grab is one less enemy that's going to be coming for the people on the extraction and trying to kill them. And this also could buy some time for the bio tracker to ping these shadows. Just be careful because if there are a lot of chargers, they will very quickly rush you down and kill you. And in all honesty, having you on extraction scan meleeing enemies is going to be more useful than you just insta-dying to a group of chargers. But once you finish this extraction scan and you get it to 100%, you have beaten R4-D2 on prisoner efficiency. And there you have it, the R4-D2 guide. I hope you all didn't mind the way that I handled this video. It was a little bit different compared to previous guides, seeing how I needed to explain the main objective for people who are just doing the main objective and people who are doing prisoner efficiency. And I tried to do it in a way where it would not be that confusing, but it also wouldn't take up a lot of extra time going over it. And I think I got to a point where I was happy with it. Granted, it took me about five or six attempts to get to this point. But as always, if you have any tips or tricks for this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you want to say, leave it down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, then consider hitting that like button. It helps out the channel and it gets these videos noticed by people who really need them. And if you want to become part of this community, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Until next time, prepare yourselves physically and mentally because we all know what's coming soon, and I'll see you all in the next video.